I couldn't be more proud of our relationships or the incredible work that we're doing together. And we're all looking forward to the future and making it real in the now. And of course, making it real is what we're all about. What does it take to make digital transformation actually happen? Do you just flip a switch and presto, your business is magically transformed? Not quite. It takes a groundbreaking company like Dell Technologies, a family of seven technology leaders working behind the scenes to make the impossible reality. For instance, we're helping to give cars the power to read your mind from anywhere. We're helping up to 40% of the nation's donated blood supply to be redirected to the areas and people that need it most. And we're even developing technology to create a whole new vision for the blind. So while you might not see what we're doing, what we're doing is changing the way we all see the world. Magic can't make digital transformation happen. But we can. Hello, Dell Technologies world. First, any Westworld fans in the house? Okay. Any hosts here or humans only? You, you, you can never really be too sure. Uh, I, uh, I started working with Dell Technologies about a year ago. And when the team first shared the campaign concept with me, I was struck by the modernity of the approach. Every day, we use devices, apps, and digital services to conduct our lives and our businesses. And yet, we don't think much about the technology or people working behind the scenes to make it come to life. So I've enjoyed pulling back the curtain a bit to tell incredible stories of what's possible when you bring together cutting edge technology and creative people. Who could have imagined cloud enabled cows just a few short years ago? But what I've learned as well is that the campaign tells another story as well. And it's that purpose that's at the heart of Dell Technologies, the belief that technology exists for a simple reason, to advance human progress on a global scale with world-changing impact toward improving lives, like the customer story Michael shared about smart urban farms aiming to feed the world. That's human progress. Improving the human condition is something that I care about as well. One issue I'm personally involved with is helping veterans who suffer from PTSD. I work with an organization in Washington, D.C. called Community Building Artworks, and they use community art workshops focused on writing, visual arts, and music to help veterans process and communicate the experiences and trauma of war as a means of self-healing and healing of their fellow vets. I was so moved by working with them and by their stories that I produced a documentary with HBO about them called We're Not Done Yet. Here's a clip that features one of the founders and the vice chair of Community Building Artworks, retired U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Joe Merritt. PTSD is like being betrayed by yourself and your brain. After I got back from Afghanistan, being a single dad and dealing with a kid with autism and trying to navigate all these things at the same time, the depression became so crippling that like, I couldn't get off the couch. My medical retirement started because I was in the hospital because I parked my car in the garage and tried to kill myself. There was a doctor and he sat me down and he was like, you, of all people, deserve better quality of life. It was the first time that somebody um, acknowledged the guilt is what was the biggest injury from Afghanistan. After I get home from therapy and do the kids stuff before I'd wash dishes or clothes, I'd make myself do something creative to like process that stuff that I couldn't talk to anybody else about. 
and it became this process that saved my life. It became this process that saved my life. Joe describes the effectiveness of this approach far better than I can. And he asked me to reiterate that he's now providing support and guidance through CBAW to ensure that other veterans have the opportunities for healing that he had. Simplify. Also, the pieces that you see projected behind me are Joe's artwork. It's been my honor to work with these men and women to help tell their stories. But you may be wondering what this has to do with technology. Well, the Dell Technologies team recently introduced me to someone who's taking PTSD therapy into a new world, literally a virtual reality world. And this tech-enabled approach has proven extremely effective, especially when partnered with human and creative therapies like that of community building artworks. To tell us more about it, I'd like to bring out Dr. Skip Rizzo from the University of Southern California Institute for Creative Technologies. Hey. Hey, Dr. Rizzo? Hi, please call me Skip. Skip, thank you for joining me. Uh, you and your team are breaking new ground every day in the treatment not only of PTSD, but also ADHD and autism, and you've invented a new tool called Project Brave, Brave Mind. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, Brave Mind is an interactive, immersive virtual reality system that we use to treat PTSD. Uh, we use this system as a way to deliver exposure therapy, one of the top evidence-based approaches for treating PTSD, where we essentially put a patient back inside the traumatic event, but in the safety of the clinical environment. So with Project Brave Mind, we're immersing patients in simulations of Iraq and Afghanistan that mirror to some degree what they experience in the field. Some of the folks that I've worked with have used your, your, your technology. Yeah, it's, it's starting to get out there a little bit more. And in, in the traditional format, it's typically done in imagination only. What we do is with virtual reality, we help a patient by putting them in simulations to confront and process very difficult emotional memories, but in the safety of the clinical environment at a pace that they can handle. And over time, we see as we do this, patients begin to feel empowered, and they get through challenges that they didn't expect that they could confront, and we see a significant reduction in PTSD symptoms. And that's really important because, you know, without treatment, you know, when people don't get treatment for PTSD, they often continue to react to everyday situations with anxiety and fear. And they become maybe more isolated. Uh, they stop hanging out with their friends or, um, you know, having relationships with people. And sometimes they end up self-medicating in unhealthy ways to try to manage or reduce their anxiety. So in the end, we, we try to reconsolidate memories through this repetitive VR exposure in the safety of the clinical environment. And, um, you know, it, we see these reductions in anxiety and feelings of threat. Um, you know, it, it's not, that's not easy business. It, it's not easy, I, you know, uh, it, it's hard medicine for a hard problem, but the science shows from clinical trials that it works. So, you wanna give it a go? Sure, let's do it. All right. Okay. All right, we have a Dell laptop running the latest Dell visor. And what I have in front of me right now is a clinician control panel. So I can put Jeffrey in any of 14 different worlds that may represent what somebody went through in Iraq or Afghanistan. Um, of say an Afghan village or a forward operating base, oh, here's your controller, um, in a mountain area or um, you know an industrial area or a marketplace like where we are right now. And so the clinician working with the patient can construct this environment around what they experience. So for example, I can, if I get my mouse back up here, here we go. 
Um, I can do things like adjust the time of day in real time. Or perhaps I can add clouds in the sky if that was relevant. Um, we can add sound effects like ambient city sounds or the sound of wind or call to prayers. Maybe I make a helicopter or a jet fly over. And, you know, as somebody goes through this, a lot of times there are provocative things that have occurred that we want to help the patient go back and, and confront. And so, for example, we might blow up a car bomb. Wow. And we can set off other explosions. Uh, it's pretty intense. Introduce sound effects. we can turn it off instantly. We always do this at a pace the patient can handle. We never push people beyond their limits, but we encourage them to go through this process. Now, this is rather provocative, and certainly this wouldn't be the first session, you know, somebody would build up to being able to confront this. But we have these wide variety of simulations. So what we're going to do now is go to something a little more, I don't want to say serene, but we're going to move Jeffrey to a forward operating base in a mountain environment. And what you're seeing on the screen here is what Jeffrey sees as he moves and interacts in this environment. So let's add a little sound. Uh, we can adjust the time of day. Let's make it sunset for this one. And there's a, a wide map of experiences that we can deliver. And in this case, I'm gonna teleport you rather than have you walk all the way up to the top of the mountain. I'm just going to pop you up there. And you can see, you know, it's not always about extremely provocative events. It's just sometimes helping a patient to go back in a safe way with the clinician right there with them to help them to go through this process of confronting and processing difficult emotional memories in a safe place. And as they do that over time, they start to feel empowered. You see the anxiety reduce, um, and uh, we see good clinical outcomes. So. <laughs> wow. So. So Skip, tell us about a typical session. Well, in a typical session, it goes for you know, a standard hour, sometimes a little bit longer. Uh, the first half, uh, the patient is in the VR simulations. They're typically narrating their experience as if they're going through it at that time, while in partnership with the clinician, adjusting things to go along with their, their narrative. Um, and then after that, uh, there's probably about 30 minutes of processing where therapists, you know, will talk with the patient about their experience, maybe bring in other types of therapy. A lot of cases, some of the art therapy, like the program that you're involved with, it's, Joe, I think... Joe describes having done that very thing, uh, using writing and arts therapy, painting, in conjunction with your technology. You know, it's, it's, it's a very similar process, just using different methods, because you're helping a patient to be able to represent what they went through, to be able to talk about it. You know, these guys come back, and women come back, and they don't talk about this stuff with people. They don't want to burden their family. They don't want to put it on their friends. So they, you know, they hold it in. And that's where, that's where, you know, the real problems come about. So, you know. Well, the key to this, it seems, is the technology, but also the right human mind, heart, and hand guiding the patient through the therapy. Certainly, this is not self-help. It's not some automated treatment. This is basically a tool 
that helps a clinician to do their job better and to engage the, the user in an experience that we find to be healing. Well, it's powerful. It's people plus machines plus creativity ultimately leading to healing. Or as our friends at Dell Technologies would say, human progress. Very, very much so, very much so. And your results are impressive. Can you tell us about those? Well, in our, one of our early clinical trials, we found 75% of people who completed treatment no longer met PTSD criteria. A series of clinical trials that followed that produced similar results. And now we're in the process of creating a new version, a more evolved version, based on what we've learned from our work with patients and clinicians. And uh, the system in various forms has been de deployed to about 100 sites um, and literally treating thousands of service members. But with our new version, we're, our mission is to get this out and available to every VA, any site that is willing to use the therapy, uh, willing to learn how to use it, and will provide training and so forth. Um, so the, the big challenge is, you know, you can have the best evidence-based approach in the world, but if you don't disseminate it, you don't make it available to everybody, it's not going to do much good. And we have a significant challenge. I mean, we're talking about, you know, estimates of 80,000 people with PTSD now due to, you know, their combat experience. And, uh, you know, we're really uh, trying to move the needle forward in making this available. It's a big challenge. Well, it's a huge critical need, but I think I know someone who may be able to help. Uh, Michael, you got a moment? Absolutely. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, count me among the big Westworld fans also. <laughs> Amazing work. Thank you, Skip. Thank you, Mark. And uh, thank you guys both for being here today. You know, Skip, uh, we really love what you're doing at Dell Technologies, and we look at the big challenges in the world, and we see that our technology, you know, actually has a role here to dramatically improve the human condition. And, you know, you're doing it, right? So we, we love that. And we'd like to help you expand the impact of the great work that you're doing and the reach with Project Brave Mind with a $100,000 grant to the USC Institute for Creative Technology. Wow. wow. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. Okay. All right. All right, man. Cool. Thank you. Look, I love it. Machines and humans together solving problems, helping advance human progress and improving the human condition. At our core, that's who we are, and that's what we do. And I couldn't be prouder to stand here today with all of you united in this effort to co-create our shared future. Now, before I wrap up, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our incredible sponsors. Thank you for your partnership and support. And of course, thanks to all of you. Many of you who journeyed here from faraway lands, I hope you enjoy your time with us and have a great few days. Thank you.